Our first speaker is David Silverman, and he didn't ask for a fancy intro, so here he is, yeah! Thank you very much. Can you all hear me? Oh, so you can. Welcome everybody to Skepticon 4. I'm David Silverman, president of American Atheists, and I am absolutely thrilled to be starting off this, uh, this event this year. Uh, this is my first Skepticon, my first even attending Skepticon, but it's not my first atheist convention. Oh, uh, yeah, I use that word. I use that word. People say that this is not an atheist convention, it's a skeptical convention. That's crap. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to tell you a little bit today, trying to get you pumped up, trying to get your, your mind in gear, but I can already tell I've been talking to a bunch of you that we're already ready to have a great convention. I brought with me a friend. Did I bring with me a friend? Yes, I did. There he is. <laughs> oh, I want to give a quick shout out to the magic people, Reddit. <laughs> I, I've been using this, this meme and the Reddit, uh, the, the Reddit folks put together these, uh, these meme faces and I'm going to use a few new ones during this presentation. Um, some of them you've hit seen, hopefully some of them that you haven't seen. Uh, it's not going to be the main point of my presentation, but maybe it'll be fun. So I have a quick agenda. That's me. <laughs> Can I get a quick show of hands uh, to see who, everybody raise your hand if this is your first atheist or skeptic event, please. Excellent. Excellent. I love newbies. And I will tell you that I still remember today, 15 years ago when I first walked into my first atheist event, I made friends that weekend that are still my friends today. I want to tell you that one of the reasons that I really got into this movement was not just because of the message, but because of the people. These people are great people. So all of you newbies out there, you're in great company. And I want you to just take some time to, while you're here and socialize as much as you can, because this is a great crowd. In the meantime, I'm going to give a few, I'm going to answer a few questions during this uh, presentation. First of all, what are you? What am I? And what are we? That's the definitions section. What's the difference between an atheist and a skeptic? And how do we work together? Then, what are the implications of that? What does this mean? Why do I care? And what difference does it make? Some of you might be asking this. Well, I'm going to let you know. Finally, what can I do? What else can I do? And what else can I do? <laughs> so this should be fun. So let's go into definitions first. Ah, I like that. That's the Skepticon thing. You see that little cross with the line through it right there? That's pretty specific, isn't it? That, that, that's, that's pretty unambiguous. So now, offensive. what? It's so offensive. It's definitely an attack on, on Christians everywhere. <laughs> you know, if you, if you say what you're thinking, you're definitely attacking them, especially if they don't like it. What is skepticism? Skepticism is defined as a skeptical attitude or temper or doubt Doubt or unbelief with regard to a religion, especially Christianity. I didn't make that up. And I didn't have to look too hard to find it. It's just, I, I just wanted to point out that being questionable about religion is part of the definition of being skeptical. What is a skeptic? A person who habitually doubts authenticity of accepted beliefs. A person who doubts the truth of religion. That's us. All right, especially Christianity, hence the little cross with the line through it. Now, let's take a different look at, an at a different definition. What is atheism? Atheism is simply the absence of a belief in God or the supernatural. That's what it means. It's a very, very broad term. A lot of people think that atheism is a narrow term, that atheists are only the conclusionary atheists, the kind of atheists that have looked at the books, have read the books, and have decided, no, there is no God. That's one kind of atheism. 
but there are many kinds of atheism. There's conclusionarians, like me, and like many of you. There's also apathists, the people who don't care. <laughs> Uh, the agnostics and the agnostics who really get into the epistemological definition of knowledge more than they get into the idea of whether or not there is a God. Uh, secular humanists, Jew, secular Jews, secular Muslims, secular nuns, brights, free thinkers, non-theists. Folks, these are atheists. Every single one of them are atheists. And that's one of the things that I want to get through to you that Atheism is a broad term, not a narrow term. Now let's compare that to Christians. And this is a very important point. If you ask, if you just walk up to the street or walk out onto the street, and you find some people and you say, and you find a, uh, a Presbyterian and you ask him what religion he is, he'll say Christian. If you ask a Methodist, he'll say Christian. If you ask uh, a, a Catholic, he'll say Christian. But if you ask a secular humanist, he'll say secular humanist. If you ask an agnostic, he'll say agnostic. If you ask a bright, they'll say bright. If you ask a secular Jew, they'll say Jew. What does this mean? Atheists divide ourselves. We make ourselves look smaller. We take the more narrow definition, while the Christians, despite substantial differences, use the broader term. The result is that you get polls that say this country is 75% Christian and 1% atheist. Uh-uh. But you have to understand my point here is that by using these narrower terms to define what you are, you make us atheists look smaller. What are we? There's your atheists and there's your skeptics. A lot of people think that this is what the Venn diagram should look like. That there's some, that there's atheists over here, there's skeptics over here, and, and some atheists and skeptics are here. Let me tell you what I think. That's what we're looking at. All right? Now this is not a 100% overlap. Skeptics and atheists are not synonyms, but they should be, but they're not. Over here, on the, over here on the left side, you got the atheists who have no religion, who don't believe in a god, but they don't really think about it very much. They don't care, or they're unwilling, or they're unable to learn. Then, but, but that doesn't make them less atheistic, okay? It just makes them not skeptics. But then over here on the other side, you've got skeptics who are not atheists. I think that sliver is actually quite small. Uh, I'll just use a visual for that one, okay? <laughs> Folks, you can be a theist and you can be a skeptic, but if you're both, you're not very good at one of those things. <laughs> what does this mean? <laughs> That's a pumpkin. That's awesome, isn't it? <laughs> what does this mean? Skepticism is a very part of the over, a very big part of the overall secular movement, like it or not. Now, some people don't like it, but that doesn't make it not true. That's part of the whole thing about being an atheist. We deal in reality. The skeptical movement is a part of the secular movement. It is the part of the movement that allows atheists to gather, but not under the name of atheism. It's when you come and you gather and you talk about things may or may not be directly related to religion, but it is a very big and important part of the secular movement. Atheism should be viewed as a benchmark for skepticism. Because if you're not an atheist, you're not doing good skepticism. That's my point. Okay, if you're saying, oh, well, you know what, Bigfoot, come on, that's a myth. Okay, aliens, Orbiting and probing? That's crazy. The invisible man in the sky? Maybe. <laughs> Doesn't make sense. Atheism should be viewed as a benchmark. And the skeptics who shy away from the A word should consider the implications of the double standard. 
Because if you're actually saying that you don't, you're, you're definitely sure there's no aliens orbiting, but you can't, you can't dismiss the religion in which you were brought up, you've got some logical inconsistencies in your thought patterns, and I am here today to ask you to consider that. Why should I care? <laughs> He's definitely doing the face, don't you think? <laughs> Why should you care? Because many skeptics are closeted atheists. The ones that, you, that, um, the ones that haven't come out of the closet are still atheists, and they're here. Many atheists are closeted skeptics. Most closeted atheists feel alone and isolated. And most closets are hard to open. This is all true. The important thing is, this is where the skeptics movement comes in. This is where atheists can go to be with other atheists, but not under the banner of atheism. For some, it's a stepping stone to harder line atheism. For some, it's an endpoint. It's all good. But it should be recognized that this is a part of the overall network. The skeptic side of the movement alleviates all these problems. It allows atheists the socialization and the education without the stigma. It makes it very, very important. What's the difference? Well, together, oh, I like this guy. American Atheist is a 501c3 nonprofit organization. We do not endorse a political candidate or politicians, but that's funny. <laughs> Together, you have to understand the size of the skeptics movement. The skeptics movement is large. It's a very big part of the atheist movement. So together, we can help reduce America's bigotry against atheists. We can make those closets easier to open. We can and will earn fair representation in Congress. That means the congressman, yeah. That, that means politicians will come to us, politicians will ask for our vote, and someday, P.Z. Myers will get elected to Congress. <laughs> pay fair taxes. Hey, anybody here want to pay fair taxes and not pay more taxes because the churches pay none? That would be nice, right? We can ensure a school curriculum based on knowledge, science, and critical thinking even if it proves the Bible wrong over and over again. We can protect the children of religious parents. Now, I'm not talking about protecting them from indoctrination into their own religion. We can't stop that. That's freedom of religion. But we certainly can protect them from the rod. We certainly can protect them from uh, withholding medical, medical care. We can certainly protect those, student, those kids when they need to be protected, because they all deserve to be protected. And we can preserve the separation of church and state. Now, that's a nice thing, and it's a good thing to say, but a lot of people think that the, the separation of church and state is some kind of buzzword that we, just, that we just do because of habit. It's important, mandatory, a must, that you all understand that the separation of church and state makes freedom of religion possible. Without the separation of church and state, every degree, every step we take away from the separation of church and state is a step away from religious freedom. When they put in God we trust on the money, they took away some of your religious freedom. <laughs> Together, as the movement grows, as we expand, we're all going to be able to exit the closets. Now, some of us already have. The rest of you already hopefully will. And we can close those doors behind us. Because closets suck. <laughs> and you can quote me on that. <laughs> we can get people out of the closet. All we have to do is make the closet doors 
easier to open. That happens with socialization, that happens with education of the population, and that happens with growth. And that's all happening, and you're all a part of it. So get excited, because you're going to watch it happen right in front of you. All right, back to the toast. <laughs> what can I do? What else can I do? What else can I do? Do you sleep yet, PZ? <laughs> Well, the first thing that you can do, check that out. I don't know what he is. He, he is an engineer, but he's wearing um, steampunk glasses. <laughs> but whatever he is, he's looking at this. What can I do? Acknowledge and enjoy being part of the fastest growing segment and a winning movement. Folks, I want to just take a little bit of time here to tell you we are going to win. Okay? Atheism, notice I didn't say free thought, notice I didn't say non-theism. Atheism is the fastest growing segment in all 50 states today. Right now, right now, in the state of New York, the number one religious segment is Catholics. The number two religious segment is us. Yeah. yeah. Depending on the different polls, you're looking at about 15% of the population. 15%. That's more than Jews plus Hindus plus Buddhists plus Muslims combined and doubled. That's us. Our only problem is we're not saying it. Our only problem is we're not saying it loud enough. But guess what? We're starting to do that, and you're going to help. So be proud of being part of this movement. Don't shy away from it. Embrace it, because it's going to be great. Use atheist. Yes, I'm going to go out on a limb. Every other label is a cop-out. It is. You, somebody asks you what you are, and you don't say atheist. If you say secular humanist, and I'm just going to pick on the secular humanists. I love my secular humanist friends. If you say secular humanist, yeah, but if you say secular humanist, that person that you're talking to is going to say, well, at least he's not an atheist. <laughs> when somebody asks you what your religious beliefs are, use the A word. Use the A word. That's how we break down the stigma, putting a face to the word. Yeah, you might get a little bit of grief, but you know what? You'll get over it. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. This is how progress happens. This is how evolution of a society happens. Be an outed atheist to your friends and family. Notice I didn't say co-workers. I don't care what you do at work. I don't, work is not a place for religious beliefs. That's my firm belief, unless, of course, you're the president of American Atheists. <laughs> but be an outed atheist to your friends and your family. Now, if you're completely closeted, I want to assure you that even though this is a skeptic convention, this is an atheist organized, this is, this is an, a convention for atheists. You are safe here, okay? If you're a closeted atheist and you're afraid to come out, you are in a safe environment. Come out here. See how it feels. You're damn right we're 100% right. Be proud. For 5,000, 6,000, 7,000 years, theists have been trying to prove atheism wrong, and they have failed 100% of the time. Never in the history of humankind has a god been proven real. Never in the history of mankind has a spirit or a ghost or an afterlife been proven real. They have been trying 100% of the time. They have failed. We are right. They are wrong. <laughs> What else can I do? Because by now you're asking what else I can do. <laughs> now, I love him. If I can get you to, to, to take away anything, well, almost anything from this uh, presentation, it is this. Take no crap. This is the big point here. You're going to find bigotry. 
you're going to see bigotry. Bigotry is ugly, and it should be challenged openly, in their faces, vocally, and immediately. Just because it's politically permissible doesn't make it ethical, doesn't make it intelligent, and it does not make it acceptable. If you encounter bigotry, encounter it back. Yeah, I know, that's going to be hard, but you can do it and you'll feel empowered when you do. And by the way, once again, you'll be right, they'll be wrong, and calling it bigotry is the correct word. Volunteer or donate money anywhere in the movement. Now, I am president of American Atheists, and I do want every single one of you to, to, don to join American Atheists and to donate money to American Atheists, but the bigger picture is you're not all going to like American atheists. The atheism movement is broad, and some of you might not feel most comfortable with American atheists. That's okay. It doesn't mean you're bad, and it doesn't mean we don't get along. But I do ask you to put your money and your volunteerism anywhere in the movement, whether it's American atheists, or JRF, or what's the name of that student organization that's outside? I don't know. I think there's some students outside. But seriously, getting involved is important, and it has to be done on a large scale. So not only donate your money and your time, but also get others to do it too. Get in there. Get in this fight. We need you. Oh, and speaking of getting in this fight, anybody here who wants to go to atheists.org today, atheists.org today, you can get a free membership if you use the coupon code FREEMEM. Free mem. Okay? So we're making it easy for you to get involved. Free mem. F R E E M E M. Become an activist. This is where we need your time. Become an activist. Now, there's a whole bunch of ways that you can become an activist. You can do your YouTube videos, those are great. YouTube videos are wonderful. Back in my day, I had to ride a bicycle to the library to find out about atheism. You could just put it on your phone. So use your social media, your G+, your Facebook, your Twitter, and of course your Reddit. Thank you, Reddit. Um, or you can do old-fashioned activism. It all works. Letters to the newspapers, wearing atheist clothing. Anybody here wearing any atheist clothing? There you go. Look at that. OK, so here's the challenge. Wear it on the way home through the airport. Folks, I want to tell you something. I wear atheist clothing through every airport. I've been doing it ever since I became an activist. And in the past year or so, maybe two years, I haven't gotten any negative comments at all. It's all positive now, folks. It's all positive. The bigotry at the airports, the bigotry out in the open is going away. And the only comments that I'm getting are, thank you for wearing that shirt, and where can I get one like it? It makes me feel great, and I want you to feel that too. So keep your atheist clothing on when you go back. Start some conversations in the airport. You're going to be surprised at what you see. Oh, volunteer for politicians as atheists. This is important because we're heading into, a, um, we're heading into an election cycle. How am I doing on time? Almost done. We're heading into an election cycle. Politicians love and need volunteers. They love and need volunteers. So volunteer for the favorite politician of your choice. But when you do it, wear an atheist shirt. Wear an atheist pin, not a secular humanist pin. An atheist pin. <laughs> be out, be proud, be in their face, and be counted. Be counted by the ones who need to count us. Ah, what else can I do? Well, since you asked, you can come to the Reason Rally. The Reason Rally will be on March 24, 2012 in Washington, D.C. It's basically going to be uh, atheist Woodstock, OK? All right, I put down free thought Woodstock, but really I should have put down atheist Woodstock now, shouldn't I? The theme is celebrating secular values. This is not a religion bashing event. 
This is not a boo them event. This is a yay us event. This is a yay we're the fastest growing segment in all 50 states event. This is a yay we're right event. This is a yay us event sponsored by, oh boy, the American Atheists, American Humanists, CFI, Coalition of Reason, Richard Dawkins Foundation, JRF, uh, Atheist Alliance of America, Military Atheists, uh, Secular Student Alliance. Hi, guys. Any Secular Student Alliance people back here? Yeah. Camp Quest, the Brights, the Free Thought Society, the Secular Coalition for America, the Society. There you go. <laughs> That's one. Uh, <laughs> the, uh, the Society for Humanistic Judaism. Now, and now recently the National Atheist Party and the Washington Area Secular Humanists with a generous donation from the wonderful folk at the Stiefel Freethought Foundation. This is a huge event and we're all putting money and time and effort into making this event and I am privileged to chair the event. It's a pan-organizational event. Everybody is an equal partner. We're here to make this event large enough so that people can come and be introduced to the entire movement so that you can pick and you can choose what part of the movement feels good to you and you can join that part of the movement. And while you're there, let me tell you what, you're going to have a great time. I am making sure with everything that I got that this is going to be a motivational and entertaining day. Dawkins, Randy, Taslima Nazreen, PZ Myers, and Zomgitz Chris, Christina Rod, will be there speaking. Yeah, she's coming in from Romania. Um, we're going to have leaders from the whole movement. The leaders from all the major sponsors will be up on stage telling you about this organization. Just little speeches, not a lot, just a little. But to make sure that you understand what part of the movement, what role they play. Jamie Kilstein will be there with other comedians. And Bad Religion is going to be there. Yeah. Bad Religion will be there for a free concert. This is going to be an epic day. It's going to be the kind of event where you either attend or you regret not attending. Okay? I, I think there are some people who are, who are pretty old, like PZ, and they, if you ask them, they'll say, did you go to Woodstock? And they'll either say, yeah, I went to Woodstock, or they'll say, no, I didn't go to Woodstock. <laughs> this is that event for us. This is our Woodstock. And it is there for a very specific reason. Listen, think about how much this country changed from the 1950s to the 1970s. Think about that. It was a dramatic change. It was an entire shift. And it was all caused by young people. Young people who were motivated, young people who were energized, but they didn't have the internet. They didn't have the communication skills that y'all have. They didn't have what we have today. This is the kind of change we're going to see again. This is the kind of change that you are going to be a part of. This is the kind of change that you're going to sit back and say, <laughs> I was part of that. Just like the, the hippies who went to Woodstock. This is going to be your event. Oh, and it's free. So there are buses online. Yeah. So the website for the Reason Rally is reasonrally.org. You can get buses, you can charter buses on Reason Rally, you can uh, get discounted airfare and discounted uh, hotel rooms because we're going we're gonna to bang it out. Um, the other thing that, um, well, there's something else I was going to say. Well, there will be more people that unfortunately I can't announce. I wanted to announce some more people today, but I can't announce them. But um, you will have more people coming, including possibly some national level politicians. Very exciting. Yeah. Yeah. Because you know why? Because they need to ask for our vote. Because they need to ask our vote. They need us. And they need to know that they need us. A lot of people ask me, what can I do? What can I do? What can I do to help you? This is what we're asking. There's going to be politicians there. There's going to be TV cameras there. And the one thing we cannot have is low turnout. That's the worst thing that can happen. If we put a whole bunch of money and a whole bunch of time into this and we bring everybody and say, look at all of us, and not enough people show up, that's bad. 
We're doing everything we can to put together the best atheist event in world history, the largest atheist event in world history. Do whatever you can if you do nothing else in 2012. Come to the Reason Rally and have a good old time. And while you're there, come to the American Atheist National Convention, which will follow the Reason Rally. Now, once again, the Reason Rally is a pan-movement event. The American Atheist National Convention will follow that event. We're going, it's, going, it's going to be, the, the Reason Rally is on the Saturday, the American Atheist Convention is on the Sunday and Monday. This is going to be a fantastic convention. Was any, how many people were here for the Des Moines Convention? Yeah, did you have a good time? That was an 800 person convention. That was a lot of fun. Uh, this convention is going to be cool, uh, probably better. Uh, the theme for the convention is come out, come out wherever you are, because we're just spinning our wheels if we're just hopping with ourselves. If we're not looking at progress, if we're not looking at making a difference, what are we doing? We're just filleting ourselves. <laughs> So the idea for the convention is to come out, come out wherever you are, whoever you are, where, whenever you are. Richard Dawkins will be there to speak. P.Z. Myers is going to be there. Taslima Nazreen, Sam Singleton, who is also here this weekend, is going to be there. Um, Zomgitz Christ. And I love all those people. I love all those people. But I am most excited about Pastor M. I shouldn't say I'm most excited, but I really am piqued about Pastor M. Pastor M is an atheist preacher. He is stuck. He is a preacher at, I believe it's a Lutheran church, and he can't get out. He's an atheist, and he is making a living lying to people every Sunday. And he's coming to the convention in disguise because he doesn't have, you know, when you have, when you, when you spend your entire college career trying to be a preacher, you don't get translatable skills. Okay, So you don't have the skills to do anything else. Now he's part of the clergy project, which is being run by the Richard Dawkins Foundation. But he's going to come on stage in disguise and tell what it's like to be forced to lie just to put food on your table. That's going to be an interesting speech. We're going to have two sex talks. Woohoo! We're going to have a vlogger panel with Zomgitz Chris. Thunderfoot, Ashley Paramore, and Aaron Ra will be there. A costume dinner? Yes. Bring your costumes. Come as your favorite deity or, or, or a godly figure. Just come as you want. And we're going to have a comedy night starring Dan Ninen from Last Comic Standing and uh, Sam Singleton. All right. Now, I think that's it. It is. Now, before I close, I just want to thank you again uh, for giving me your attention. Now, a lot of the things that I've said might be a little divisive to some of you, but I kind of think you're all behind me, aren't you? Yeah. That's because you're atheists. Thank you very much. Thank you.